Okay, so it says the sketch alongside shows chord BD cutting AE at C. A is the center of the circle and A is perpendicular to BD. If EC is equal to 3 cm and BD is 14 cm, calculate the area of the circle. So here we are required to calculate the area of the circle and we know the formula for the area of the circle goes area is equal to pi times r squared so in other words we are required to find the radius of the circuit as we can see here from the given um info we don't have the radius so we have three centimeter which is for ec and then we are told that bd here is 14 centimeter but considering our theorem one of um our euclidean geometry we know that the line drawn from the center bisect the chord so a line drawn from the center perpendicular to the chord bisects the chord which means bc is equals to cd which will now give us seven centimeter and seven centimeter now in order to calculate the radius we would have to construct other radius here to join ad and we can construct another radius here to join um b there so we have AB radius and AD radius. So let me draw it nicely there. Okay. So now we have this. AB is the radius. AD is the radius. And also AE is the radius. Now having to calculate this, we can now manipulate and use um, one of the triangles here. So let's, let's, let's pick ADC. So that means since this land here is a radius and also this is a radius, here we are given that it's, it is 3. We don't know the land from A to C, so we're going to indicate it as X. But then this, since this is a radius, this is going to be X plus 3, which is equal to this land here, A to E. Right. Now having to calculate this using this triangle here, we can use Pythagoras theorem since we have a right angle triangle. So that will give us AD. A D squared is equals to A C squared plus C D squared. And we say the reason is Pythagoras theorem. Right. Then what is our A D? Our A D is X plus 3. And then square that. Our A C is X and then square. And then our C D is 7. So 7 square. Then having to solve this, we'll end up with X squared plus 6x plus 9 and then here we have x squared and then this will give us 49 right now solving this we can see that the x squared and the x squared will cancel out so we'll be left with 6x and then let's transpose this 9 this will be 49 minus 9 so we'll have 40 here then we can divide both sides by 6 so dividing both sides by 6, our x is now equals to 6.67 centimeter. But then remember, this is only the value for x. We are looking for the radius. The radius is, a, is indicated as x plus 3. So in order to calculate our radius, we can say radius is equals to 6.67 plus 3, which now our radius will be equals to 9. 6 7 centimeters therefore now we can calculate the area using this formula we have area is equal to pi r squared then we just substitute our pi like that and then what is our r 9.67 and then square that this will now give us 139.77 centimeter square okay and then we have number two it says the sketch shows circle center o with oc parallel to ab and ocb being equal to 76 degrees and a is equal to x calculate the value of x so now having this we are told that uh, we have parallel lines here then we know with parallel lines we associate parallel lines with fun Maths is fun, so we want to see if we have any corresponding angles, any co-interior angles or alternate angles. So with this one, we can see there is no F forming, there is no Z or N forming. Def then that means definitely we have a, a U forming here. So if you can check in between this parallel lines OC and AB, we can see that there is a U here. 
so this is our co-interior angles right meaning we can get the value of b using our co-interior angles so b will be equals to now we know co-interior angles are, sub are supplementary that means if we add angle b and angle c so angle b plus angle c this should give us 180 degrees because we are saying core interior angles are supplementary then offering a uh, the pair of parallel lines we say oc parallel to ab then we can just go ahead with solving we have b will be equals to 180 degrees minus 76 right then obviously b has to be 104 degrees right so now that we have b is 104 degrees remember we are looking for this x here but right now we can see something happening here we can see that this angle here let's name this 101 and this will be 02 we can see that 02 here is, sub is subtended by the arc ac and also arc ac subtends this angle b here so angle b is 104 now we can see that angle o2 is at the center so angle at the center subtended by the same arc um, will be twice the angle at the circumference that means o2 o2 is equal to 208 degrees and we say the reason is angle at center is twice the angle at the circumference nice so we have 208 degrees here 208 degrees now if we can check here we have angles around a point or revolution angle which we know they add up to 360 degrees meaning using that we can calculate o1 so our angle O1 will be equal to 360 minus 208 degrees, which will land us with 152 degrees. And then we say the reason is angles round a point. Now that means we can use all this to calculate X here. So to calculate X, we'll just use the fact that this is a quadrilateral and all interior angles of a quadrilateral should add up to 360 degrees. So X is equals to 360 minus every angle, every interior angle. So minus 152 minus 104 minus that 76. So X now should be equals to 28 degrees okay so it says the diagram shows circles with center q and o and mtr is equal to 40 degrees mt and rt are not necessarily tangents to the smaller circle so we are told that mt here and rt are not tangents then okay 3.1 says determine the value of q2 now if we can look at the bigger circle here we can see that m r mqrt is a cyclic quad all the vertices touch the circumference so this is a cyclic quad meaning all rules of the cyclic quad apply so that means in order to calculate the value of q2 we can say that adding q2 and angle t here must give us 180 degrees why because um opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary so in other words q2 must be equal to 140 degrees and the reason is opposite angles of cyclic quad so opposite angles of cyclic quad so the 40 and 140 degrees will give you 180 degrees remember supplementary means add up to 180 degrees then 3.2 let's calculate the value of o1 now if we can look at o1 here we can see that o1 is subtended by the chord mr so if we hold chord mr we can see that it subtends an angle here at the center which is o1 but the same chord mr subtends another angle at the circumference which is t right now we know of a or of a theorem that says an angle at the center is two times an angle at the circumference meaning o1 angle o1 will be equal to 80 degrees the reason is angle at center angle at center equal to two times angle at circumference right now okay let's 
look at 3.3 3.3 says calculate the angle pmo so pmo is all of this so this is pmo that means pmo is m1 m2 and m3 right but then if we can look at the smaller circle let's focus on the smaller circle we can see that here we have um a diameter because pr is passing through the center remember q we are told that q is the center so if we have a line passing from circumference to circumference through the center we know that that line is a diameter and what do we know about a diameter it will subtend an angle of 90 degrees on the circumference right so that means m1 m1 plus m2 is equals to 90 degrees and the reason is angles on a semicircle so these are angles subtended by a diameter so this is 90 degrees but then remember we are looking for m1 m2 and m3 so how are we going to get the value of m3 here remember we've already have the value of o1 which is 80 degrees and then seeing this one from this bigger circle here we can see that om here is a ray is a radius because it's from the center to the circumference and also or is a radius which means that that m3 here is equal to r2 but here we have 80 degrees that means we are only left with 100 degrees to be shared equally amongst these angles so this leaves us with m3 being equals to 50 degrees right because with the 100 this will be 50 and 50 so where do we take that from base angles of isosceles base angles of isosceles now we know that pmo therefore pmo must be equal to this 90 degrees plus this 50 degrees this will give us 140 degrees now let's look for angle p in order to get angle p we can use this right angle triangle that we have here but then first we'll need to find the value of r1 to find the value of r1 we can use this triangle here remember o2 we've already calculated q2 i meant to say we've already calculated it to be 140 degrees opposite angles of cyclic quad so that means we are left with 40 degrees to be shared equally amongst this because qr is a radi and also qm is a radi once again we have an isosceles triangle right so this is 140 degrees and this is 20 degrees and 20 degrees so 20 plus 140 160 plus 2180 so yeah then that means our r1 we can now say r1 is equals to 20 degrees from what base angles of isosceles base angles of isosceles but then now if we consider this whole triangle that means angle p angle p plus angle m1 plus angle m2 plus r1 must give us 180 degrees why because this is the sum of interior angles of a triangle right so looking for p we can now say p is equals to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 20 degrees then p will be equals to 70 degrees now okay let's look at question four it says in the accompanying figure a b is a diameter so we are told a b is a diameter of the circle with the center o dc is a tangent so we are told dc is a tangent to the circle at point c chord a c is drawn and d is a point on the tangent dc so that a1 is equal to a2 so we are told that these two are equal now 4.1 says prove that ad is parallel to oc so how are we going to prove that these are parallel we know with parallel lines we make use of fun so we want to see if there are any corresponding angles any co-interior angles or any alternate 
any alternate angles that we can find but if we look at this we can easily see that we have alternate angles here right but then it's just a matter of proving that a2 will now be equal to c2 so that we can really conclude that ad is parallel to oc now how can we prove that at a2 here is equal to c2 from here we can see that ao is a radi from the center to the circumference because we are told o is the center and then from o to c this is also another rad once again we can see that after identifying our pair of radi this is now an isosceles triangle meaning that a1 meaning that a1 will now be equals to c2 this is because base angles of isosceles now you can also indicate you can also indicate that that is based on the fact that AO is equal to OC which we can see it's because they are ready right now remember we are told here but so we can say but A1 is equal to A2 so that statement we are given now we can now we know that if A1 is equal to C2 and A1 is equal to A2 then that means we can now conclude that a2 is equals to c2 because they are both equals to a1 now having that we can now say converse converse alternate alternate angles as you can see a2 alternates with c2 so if these are alternate angles then it can be proven that ad is parallel to oc okay so 4.2 says uh, prove that adc is equal to 90 degrees so from the previous question we've identified and proven that ad is parallel to OC so that means we can have all of this we can produce our corresponding angles our co-interior angles or alternate angles right but then looking at this we are, we've been given that DC is a tangent to this uh, circle and then OC here is a radius now what do we know if a radius and a tangent meet we know that where the radius and the tangent meet we have a 90 degrees based on the theorem that says tan is perpendicular to radius the tangent is perpendicular to the radius so in other words we can say c1 plus c2 is equals to 90 degrees and the reason is tan perpendicular to radius now looking at this we can see that if we say this are parallel lines then we can see that c1 and c2 and also d here will form core interior angles so we can see a u forming in between these parallel lines so if this is 90 degrees we know core interior angles are supplementary so if this is 90 degrees that means d also must be 90 degrees so in other words we can say ang angle adc is equals to 90 degrees and the reason is core, is core interior angles co-interior angles right so we know co-interior angles are supplementary and then we can offer the pair of parallel lines we say ad parallel to oc in that way we have proven that adc is equal to 90 degrees sharp sharp